So uh, next up, we have Helen Spires, uh, who is a service design specialist. Hi, Helen. Hi, Welcome. how are you? How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good. Uh, thank you for coming along to the Open Forum um, and for speaking to us today. So, uh, Helen, uh, as I mentioned, you're, you're a service design specialist. How would you sum up your role the best? Yeah, I think as, as a service designer, I think it's all about understanding human interaction, regardless of that. Is it the front interaction with your users or your colleagues and people who are supporting the processes and the business support? processes and also that kind of societal users as well so um, my role as a service designer is kind of how things fit together and, and piecing that puzzle together really great thank you and what effect do you think the pandemic has had on service designers i think it's a huge explosion really um i think we've talked about it before that service designs never really need, had an emergency before um, and the pandemic was, was utterly that. How do, how do we cross product lines? How do government departments talk to one another? Um, people's lives aren't kind of siloed into neat little products. It was about they lost their jobs. We've heard from other panelists, you've got schools. How do I work around that? somebody's poorly it just it it merged so many things that it made it it was just imperative that you had to work across lines of departments or specialisms so i think um the pandemic really thrust service design and service designers capabilities to the fore absolutely um and you, you kind of mentioned before about having to consider um people's in access to, to digital means as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it is, it's really what we found that was there was huge inequality in either in access to digital, um, taking away people's access. So when the libraries closed, that created a huge swathe of inability to access things. Um, charities just kind of stopped and put pause. There had been that real support network for a lot of people. So I think when the pandemic hit, it um, it created a moment where people had to really look at how we serve services to people. And it couldn't just be through digital means. It, it had to be equal access for everybody. Absolutely. So I can fully imagine that um, having a distributed design meeting is incredibly difficult because design is such a collaborative thing. How do you do that in a, in a meeting where everybody's everywhere? Yeah, I think Natalie mentioned before, um, the tools, the whiteboard and tools have been amazing. So we couldn't have got through the pandemic without, but it just isn't quite the same just that because you really want as a designer kind of want to draw your ideas out and scribble and add things to it and there's not that that dynamic element of, of visual learning together in a team um that being said the methods haven't changed it's just the tooling so i think again we've talked about distributed teams um it's just almost oversharing and over communicating with people, um, opening a, a Zoom call and keeping it static with the radio on so you can just talk to one another as if you were sitting next to each other's kind of helped. Um, so, yeah, we've we've adapted, but it's. I think it is it is unique in the terms of the skill set sometimes does just have to have a. a a conversation about things um yeah so i think that's what's really changed over the pandemic absolutely and um so you've worked in the, the public sector for the last few years um what do you think that the public sector's learned about service design due to the pandemic yeah i think service design's almost become a bit of a buzzword in in public sector at the moment and um we've had lengthy conversations that having a service designer doesn't mean that you're doing service design 
there's there really does have to be a kind of a cultural change in public sector to allow service design to happen um i really genuinely believe that started to happen and i think a lot of it is examining funding models and things like that of how you allow people to cross cut problems and look at user journeys and um involving users more as well so we've obviously we've often taken an expert mindset where we've got user researchers that go out absorb this information then come back to the office and relay that information whereas the pandemic's really allowed us to actually get the people in the room with us and start co-design it's not it's, again it's not there yet but you can see it's on the path so i think the pandemic's allowed us really to and from a public sector perspective to start talk to talking to one another a little bit more um there is always there is always had that cross-government communication channels um but it seems to absorbed outside of the practice of service design now it, it seems that the, the architects and the other professionals and the product owners are all now kind of talking as well so i think it's quite exciting if we continue that momentum that we break down the barriers of our departments great and um you kind of mentioned tools before and um and having access to, to 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 users as well do you think that once we're all back in the office or once we're all able to be all back in the office do you think some of those tools and technologies will continue to be used when we are in in meetings all together or do you think it will just revert back to how it was previously i think it is I know we talk about agility and not so much documentation, but actually a lot of the fast paced works relied on relaying information quickly to onboarding off people, offboarding people. Teams haven't been so static. There's there've been a lot of changes within teams. So relaying information quickly has relied on trustworthy, lightweight documents. So things like the whiteboarding tools and uh, collaborative documents, not name them, but <laughs> share, being able to share the documents freely with anybody um, that you can has, has been really helpful. So I think those practices will have to stay if we want to continue to knowledge share in a wider capacity than just our immediate teams. Fantastic. Thank you, Helen. That was, uh, that was really insightful. Again, Helen will be joining us for the, the, the session later on, uh, so thank you for that.